Hello traders, uh, hello traders, uh, the title of the video is uh, Bitcoin Trader versus Bitcoin Monthly Chart Part 2. My apology to traders, in the previous video, at one point, the sound has disappeared. Alright, so that's why I'm recording this uh, second part to clarify what we were discussing. Uh, very fast, I will not make it too long this time, okay, uh, to avoid the same blah blah blah. So we saw this uh, very fast, you see, there was uh, this triangle that we were talking about on the daily chart, right? I'm using trading view software, so here it is. People were selling at the top. Okay. So it's a consolidation play on the daily chart. So people are selling here. The ultimate target is the lower part of the consolidation, all right? Those who sold it here, the midpoint target is the media line of uh, that uh, triangle right there. Okay. Now, the price is a little bit out of the triangle, but it doesn't mean that definitely will continue to go down. It can come up, it can turn back inside, okay, meaning that rise back, rising to the media line one more time before coming down or going back all the way to the top there. All right. If the price is out of the triangle, okay, we project uh, the, the height of the triangle down. There is a target somewhere in the zone of 54, call it 5400, somewhere in that zone, all right? That's the ultimate target. And there is a midpoint target somewhere in the zone of 7632, in the, that zone, okay? That's the midpoint target. If it continues to go there. So the high probability trading setup will be another higher low below that triangle. So uh, how we can Hold on, please. We can, we can, we can also. So, the purpose of uh, using uh, dynamic trade line, market geometry, or any technical trading tool, is to gather more information. You see, now uh, we were talking about the triangle. Now I place this uh, pitchfork tool on my chart. You can see that the price is riding, okay, the upper level of this declining. Of this uh, uh, declining uh, pitchfork tool on the daily chart. All right. If I did not place uh, that pitchfork tool on my chart, I won't see what is happening here now. So whenever we are using uh, a trading tool, is to gather information. All right. Moment, please, traders. I hope the sound is still okay now. Otherwise, I have to do the third one. Okay. So that's it. So another thing I was talking about in that video is that uh, if you look on the daily chart, we have another triangle here. The triangle that was formed at the end of uh, February 2018 up to November 2018. You can see we have that red triangle here on the daily chart. And I said in that video, okay, that one can extend the base. You see the base of that triangle. You see the base here. We extend it, okay, apart from the media line of our projection. Okay, watch out for that uh, extension at the C3, C3, C2 in that zone. I say zone. C3, C2 in that zone. That's, that, this is about uh, extending. The base of this triangle. So you will see once you draw this one, you see this one also. Just draw it roughly, roughly, right? Just draw it roughly, roughly, and understand that uh, it's coming down. Okay, watch out for that uh, media line and also that one there. Okay, going back to the chart that uh, the TSTWS or A zero zero A trader did send me. Uh, you redraw that triangle. You can see here at the top. Hello. So. We have a media line for that uh, rectangle also, all right? And we have, uh, okay, uh, this uh, diagonal, if you divide the rectangle into two, we have uh, this diagonal, and we have this one also, which is a projection on this angle here, uh, to here. And uh, what I'd like also, you can see here on the monthly chart, it connected the high of July 2019 to the high of August 2019. Now the common circle line on the monthly chart is broken. So if you go back to the monthly chart, so all we are doing, we are just gathering information so we can make okay a viable trading decision 
using a different time frame of a trading method. That's what we are doing now. So for the monthly chart, we went to the daily chart to investigate, to gather more information. Uh, that's what we are doing. So the, what I will say to you is that uh, this common trade, trade line is broken on the monthly chart. Okay, this one is broken now. So this monthly can you see bar on the on the monthly. This this is the month of August. So we are now in September. So next week. So what we can do, we can hide at the high, the low, and the median line of this monthly can you see bar, and then you switch to the Okay, a daily chart and see the reaction of the price around those key level. All right, the high, the low, and the median line of uh, the range of the month of August. Okay, so the price was in a triangle. The gentleman draw his line somewhere here, somewhere in the zone of uh, 11029. I draw mine a little bit higher here. Top of that, my rectangle is somewhere one, three, four, and then one, and the lower part of my triangle is at uh, four, two, three, nine. Okay, and the media line of my rectangle is somewhere in the zone of eight, three, two, eight. So the price now headed to the media line of uh, that uh, bigger rectangle here. This is uh, okay, part of my rectangle. I can put another one here, but did not. Okay, so that if you look carefully. Uh, the gentleman draw the, the dynamic trend line. Today, who, do, who are not familiar with the dynamic trend line, go to www.dprotraders.com uh, at the home page. I say home page. Place the cursor on the word more and in the drop down menu, select the dynamic trend line. So, this is a dynamic trend line. You see here, and the price is now touching here. And as the gentleman did it nicely, we have a hot spot in the zone. It is level here in the zone of 13. 13,000 13, level price level. Uh, we have the intersection of the that dynamic trend line. His dynamic trend line is the green one here, and that horizontal line defines now at a hot spot trading zone. Prior to bullish signal above that hot spot trading zone, that intersection there, and prior to bearish signal below it, you want to trade. You want to trade on the edge using a different time frame trading method. So we have a bearish trading setup on the monthly chart. And prior to bullish signal above, and prior to bearish signal below it. Now we are using what we call a different time frame trading method going from the monthly chart to the daily chart, daily chart to the hourly time frame. Uh, okay, <laughs> on the hourly time frame, we have another triangle here. If you see here, properly roughly, you see? This is on the hourly time frame. So the price now hanging a little bit below there. So people saw it at the top there of that triangle on the hourly time frame. This is the entry for some of the swing traders that are coming in a bit too late. Because there were some better entry okay, on the edge here on the hourly time frame. This is a nice entry for a swing trader. Another entry in this zone here for a swing trader or here. We hit it here from a lower high. And uh, this is a beautiful entry here for a swing trader that is using monthly chart, daily chart, hourly time frame. Shh, look at that. Another one here. Some traders. Coming a bit late now, so they are here. So they need to pay attention to that triangle also on the hourly time frame. So, so that's it. So very, very important. So we are going from one time frame to another time frame. But the bottom line, our setup is where? So the monthly chart, bearish. Now we are looking for a good excuse to sell. That good excuse to sell will take place on the daily chart. When we see that, we don't know just sell it. Okay, we will check whether it's a good place. That signal is taking place. Sometimes signal can take place not on the edge. We want it to be on the edge nicely. So some speculative traders may sell here carefully. It may pop down. They are lucky, but it's a tricky place to sell. If you are doing that, use okay your stop loss carefully so they don't when they take you out, you understand that okay, it was a risky trade. I was trying my luck and it didn't work and don't, don't push it too far. Don't move the stop loss here, okay? Uh, because it may work beautifully. It may just pop out nicely, so which is nice. Or it may come back up, taking those that are selling here. So normally the better entry were here before. So you want, this is it now. 
setup is in place, now people want to shout. You want to make sure there is a signal at a good place before you enter. The entry, the entry is another signal again. Sometimes you want to enter, you need to wait again. This is it. If you want to enter a bullish trade, people are busy selling, you need to wait. Or they may mess it up completely, and you may not even enter the trade, though the signal is in place. As I said before, the signal is the most important thing. So you sell. There was a signal to sell. You sell. Okay? Well, you sell, you know that other traders may be buying also. So if they are buying because they want to buy or they see they didn't gather enough information like you, and they are buying when you are selling. If many traders are doing that, they may cause the signal to fail, which can happen, which is something that can happen. So, but sometimes traders find it very difficult when they're already in the trade and then finally the signal fell and they're looking at it and sometimes they, they, they don't cut the loss quickly and go because they mess up your trade. That's, it. That's correct. They mess up the trade. So, all you have to do is to shut it and go. <laughs> all right. But if you hang around or you move your stop loss too long and those people are, are, are still around, uh, they can mess you up. Sometimes if you decided okay, not to move your stop loss, when they, are, they didn't take you out yet, it's, that's your decision. So you decided, okay, I know they are buying, but the, my stop loss is still at the safe place. Uh, I would prefer to take the full loss. I don't want to cut it. That's another decision. All right. So all in all, it's bearish on the monthly chart. On the daily chart, the signal will fire a few times here. On the edge, now we are here a bit tricky. The price always headed to a specific target level. The triangle is also telling us that anything is possible. If it goes back above the triangle and display higher low or funny support, well, we must give priority to bullish signal. We form a lower high. As I show you now, we put on this chart before. Remember that that pitchfork tool can be useful. We can project that pitchfork tool in the direction of the price, whether it goes back up or below it. So this is it now. This is the step now to make sure we find a good signal on the edge and we safely enter the trade. That's the only thing uh, that we need to do. If we enter the trade, we manage it, all right? And uh, this is it, all right? So by managing it, we are saying that, okay, losing trade will happen, but we don't want it to be too big. So you check, sorry, my apologies, to trade this, you, you check the risk-reward ratio, okay? And before you even consider to take the trade, all right? You enter safely. You don't push your stop loss all over the place. And most importantly, you stick to the 5% money management rule. This is what I say to traders all the time because, uh, as I said to traders before, um, the 5% money management rule, it means that even if you are you have $1 million, you are, your, your worth is $1 million, if you want to come into the financial market and play with some of those uh, phone, you can only play with 5% of your your total wealth. That's it. All right. And again, when you start playing with that 5%, okay, anytime you have, whether it's three trade, five trade, you look in account, the amount that you are risking should be 5% of the trading account. So 5% of your wealth and also 5% of your trading account. All right. And trade edge, I mean, some very disciplined investors stick to that. So if anything happened one day, uh, and you say, all right, one, there was a time when I was in the financial market, but uh, they didn't take my shirt. I lose some money. But they didn't take my shirt. They didn't ch change my lifestyle. That's what we don't really to do. So if one day you, 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 so life is, I mean, I don't have to preach to people here. It's just, uh, that's my experience that uh, we're learning all the time. So we, we want to try something. We, we are learning to trade. And so we gather some information. So we may know, a person may not be a successful trader, but that person may learn something for the financial market that may help the person in another area in life. So this is it. All right. So this is what, so, but we, as we are doing all this, we do not want to uh, expose ourselves all over the place and uh, throw money away too much. Uh, sometimes when I'm saying that, traders say to me, Joe, you're talking too much. I mean, I mean, I prefer to say it uh, so traders uh, dislike me instead of not saying it. So, <laughs> all right. 
Another thing I want to say to Freda is this, that the money management is make a big difference. Why? Because suppose you have two traders, okay, one that took uh, seven trades, all right? So they're all using TSCW24 or TSCWS so 08 and they, they all took seven trades. So probably they bring them to court, they say, you are talking about TSCW24, TSCWS as usual, A all over the place. You say that the winning rate is S, blah, blah, blah. Prove it to them, all right? So they all start with uh, $1,000 trading account. So $1,000 trading account for trader A, $1,000 trading account for trader B. So the first trader, he took, out of the seven trades, he got five winning trades, okay? This is about money management, okay? He got five winning trade out of seven. That's excellent, isn't it? Excellent, excellent trade. It's an excellent trader. No one can question it. On the first value, he's an excellent trader. Okay. But being a successful trader or being an excellent trader doesn't mean that one has a profitable trading account. Does not always mean that one will have a profitable trading account. So this is it. There are a lot of traders in the financial market that can trade very well, but they are they, they do not have profitable trading account. It doesn't mean that they are not excellent traders. They can trade, but they are not making money. That's it. Or they do not have enough money to fight in the financial market. But they don't want to throw money at it. So the second trader, trader B, took uh, seven trade, same financial instrument, and he got a three winning trade out of seven. What a poor trader. On the first value, it looks like he had the worst trader, isn't it? Three winning trade using the same system, trading the same financial issue, having the same trading account in the same market environment. All right? Three winning trade out of seven. The first one, five out of seven. So the best trader is the one that got what? Five trade out of seven. But that's not true. That's not always true. A trader may have a three winning trade out of five, <laughs> out of seven. And a trader may have five winning trade out of seven. But if you check their trading account, now this is it. This is where the money management comes in. A trader that is cutting his loss very fast, that is cutting the loss or minimizing loss, that is very defensive, may have a three winning trade out of seven, but may have a profitable trade in comparison to the one that took, uh, uh, the one that has a, a five winning trade out of seven. So, it's all down to the money management. So if you are taking bigger losses, so you have a two winning trade, two losing trade out of seven, but probably if you have a, the first losing trade, you have a $200. The second one, you have a $300 loss, a 500 pie nicely there. Now the one that lost uh, uh, four out of seven, probably he managed his trade so well that at the end, his loss is only 200 Now, and if that trader also know how to manage his train, he may have also more profit, meaning that, okay, so we are saying, so you see here, people, sometimes it happens to swing trade. So you, you come to like a day, can start like this, okay? And you enter your swing trade, and everything will work beautifully. So suppose you enter here, I'm talking about this candlestick kind of back here. And it just worked beautifully. Look at that. It just went one candlestick kind of back from here, that day he brought it to the media line. You secure your gain, you move your stop loss, you secure your gain, and you grab your profit, you bank some profit. The idea of banking the profit means that you are not using your trading phone to pay for the losses. You want to use those winning trades to pay for it. So a trader may be losing the financial market, but he or she who is managing the trade carefully may not have huge losses because he's having winning trade. He's making sure he's getting some money into the bank that will pay for the losing trade instead of only using the trading phone to pay for the losses. We don't want that. So sometimes a swing trader may enter a trade, the market may smile, and they have a 180 pips that day. But the person may not take a defensive measure. So the next day, look at this. So not before even the market closed, you see it bounce up a bit, and the following day, it went back up like this. And sometimes, trader can be taken out of the trade, and they say, wow, had 200 p profit now here it is nothing there so it's all down to the money management so the trader was saying to me also that uh, okay george so i don't actually want to say to trade in general is this okay sometimes you may be learning 
all over the place. We shut down my five, or you may be frustrated. You go from here, 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 here. You try everything, all right? And you think that you are not going anywhere, all right? Like I said before, five percent money management rule will save you if one day you discover that it's not working. That's for sure. The second thing, managing the the, the trade carefully and banking profit will also help. The third thing is that, okay. It's not because okay, one is feeling the challenge because we are learning also through the experience, the losing trade, okay, the losses, the thing that you are tra a trader is going through every day. That's why I leave it all the time to trader to go through it because it's the fire. So you want to go to war, you have to know how to go to war, yes or no. So this is good. So traders are learning the emotion, the feeling, the losses, the ups and downs. It's part of the trading. Traders should be able at one point to 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 to, to overcome it or to to control it one way or another and make their own decision, or whether they may say, "All right, okay, I, I better buy and hold." So, I will buy. Thank you. 
Okay. And, uh, 